Think of the ways our systems ingest data today. They are in neat table formats like our CRM systems. Unfortunately, our enterprise content, just 90% of our data, doesn't fit neatly into these tables. Hi, my name is Meena Ganesh, Senior Product Marketing Manager for AI at Box. I'm here with Ben Koos, CTO of Box, and today we're breaking down data extraction. Ben, let's start with the basics. What is data extraction? Yeah, uh, so data extraction is, uh, or some people call it metadata extraction, is the idea of pulling out structured information from unstructured data. The reason we talk about this now is uh, similar to what we discussed in a previous episode with unstructured data is that with the new generative AI capabilities, uh, remember like generative AI was kind of born on unstructured data, but it has the ability not just to generate new information, but it can also kind of read through info that you have and then also be able to pull out key information. And so you can actually uh, have the AI pull out structured information from unstructured data in many different formats. So we're bringing structure to unstructured data, which is really great. Yeah. But Ben, didn't we used to do data extraction long before AI came along? Yeah. So actually, this whole industry, uh, uh, IDP, um, which has uh, been around for a long time, and there are companies that have products that do this. Some like big name ones would be like TechStrack from AWS or Document Understanding from uh, from from GCP. But many times uh, these these uh, systems historically, they were really based on like very specific document types. And and they let you extend them or you could get like just, you could actually train a, a, your own ML based model, like not a generative AI model, a machine learning based model to go recognize certain document types. But it typically was hard. You had to get a lot of examples. You had to get a lot of different, um, uh, sometimes you'd be like a whole like data science team to go figure these things out. And so customers typically only did it for things that were very high volume. And and um, and then they kind of missed out on having like this, uh, some of this like very valuable data extracted from these kind of documents. Can you give me a couple of examples? Sure. So like a prototypical example is like a contract. And so okay. um, now if you have a contract, the signed contract itself is, is like a very important thing. Like you don't ever like, there's no like single pieces of data that you would ever pull out that would be like the whole thing. So it's not like you, you pull out the data and then you like throw away the contract, the unstructured data of the contract, all the words, how they're written, how they they need to be interpreted. So you need to keep around this idea of um, the, the 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 file, the document, mm -hmm. the, the, the the contract. But then there are things that you really care about, especially if you have a lot of these. Some companies have hundreds of thousands or millions of these kind of contracts. And so um, you want to know things probably like like who signed it, what's the effective date, uh, what's the contract about, uh, what's the amount if it's a if it's got a um, a dollar associated, what's a currency? Just like all these things will then help you do, do things like figure out which contracts are expiring or um, uh, which ones have certain clauses that are that are challenging. So this is an example of the kind of thing that enterprises care about when they when we say like uh, when you, when you want to have um, structured in uh, structured data out of your unstructured data. So, but it sounds like there is a system in place. There's current processes that do it right now for high value, high scale, yeah, you know, situations. Why change now? Well, so the, what a lot of customers are really interested in is that the things that were too expensive can now be handled by generative AI. Generative AI was born in unstructured data is pretty good at this. So it'll actually be able to go through and you can almost give it any type of, of data, unstructured data, uh, like documents. Um, you can give it like pictures. You can give it an audio and video and then have it say, pull out a structured data. It's actually very similar to if you asked a, like a group of people and you said, give them each of them a file and you say, this is what I want from it. And if a person can you know, read the document or, or watch the, the look at the image or whatever and pull that out, out the information, then it actually, the AI can usually do it as well. So it's almost, it's, so it's this idea of applying intelligence to this unstructured data in a way that then gives you out this like kind of nice tabular sort of data that, that comes out of it. And so for many companies, they're, they're like, it's really lowered the bar for what they can do to get this very valuable data. Um, historically, it was only for certain types of like of uh, very high volume and or like easy to structure. Now it can be almost anything. At some point, um, the complexity of what you're trying to get, the number of fields, the instructions per field that you need to tell it what to do became so complicated that it is um, it, it sometimes doesn't work as well as you might want it to. So what do you do when you you have a single shot and you uh, and it's not working from an AI perspective from previous episodes? Make it an agent. Make it agentic, yes. And so um, this is one of the new techniques that is actually works uh, very well to, to almost have arbitrarily complex documents, which is to not just have the AI, say, go through and pull out the, the data, but then also to do things like um, if there's too many fields and it's getting confused, it'll break it down and like get a few fields at a time. 
um, if, if, if it'll actually have a grader, so it'll pick out some fields and then ask a, a grader to go in and be like an AI grader, like to like another little agent to like check its work. And then if it can't figure it out, it might look at like you know, pictures of the document and things like that. So it's able to go through through a number of different techniques to be able to get these like really complicated documents, which usually in some enterprises are the ones that are the most valuable, the things that you used to require a human sit down, read, transcribe. Some cases we talked to one of our customers who deals with these really critical leases and they had, uh, they called it eight eyes. They had four different people review the data so that they wow. could make sure that they get it accurate. Um, and then in this, and for AI it can help you maybe not get rid of all those people because of course human review is always important in, in really critical situations, but they could cut down basically six of those eyes or three different people re reviewing these these documents. Mm. So this is the kind of thing where, where um, enterprises are seeing not only some efficiencies with this kind of approach, but also they're able to start to add in structured data form things that used to only exist in unstructured data form. And that's been really where a lot of the tension on this topic has come from. Give me an example of what companies could, like a piece of content maybe, yeah. that companies couldn't do data extraction with before, and now yeah, the so doors are just opened up even more with AI. Yeah, we were just talking about our customers. They're uh, a real estate company. Mm -hmm. and so if you're a real estate company and you have a lot of buildings, like one of the most important things you have are leases to these buildings. And these, and if you've ever seen, is like really long, complex, like have all these different details about about exactly all, um, the specific characteristics of this lease. And, it, mm -hmm. and it's typically um, like in order to understand it, you have to read through it. You have to like deduce some of the the terms of, and based on the the, the language of, of these leases. Mm -hmm. But and it's really critical that they're able to like understand these very well. And they, oftentimes, you know, if they're a real estate company, they have a lot of these. And so they 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 will um, historically have gone through and, and and had people, sometimes multiple people or often multiple people, go through read it try to get the key terms that they want out of it and then um, and then put that into like a custom system or a database. Okay. And then this would then let them do things like query the, the um, look for like, you know, get notifications about things that are upcoming, important dates, um, being able to like understand some of the implications. Like my buildings in Chicago, do I have like signage rights for um, mm -hmm. this kind of thing? And so for a company that specializes in this kind of area, like this is really critical for them. And so um, this is where suddenly they can start to have AI help them not just pull out some of the fields that they were manually doing, but also look for more information because AI is quite intelligent and knows a lot about these things. And so they can get the, the data out faster. They could um, use it for, for more purposes. And this is just kind of one example from one specific vertical. But there's other examples across, like almost every company has a legal department. Some companies have an awful lot of contracts, things like in like life sciences, they have a lot of like research and, pro and, and, and various projects that have a lot of details about them. Um, financial companies have a lot of uh, financial documents that kind of have really critical information. Um, uh, government has no end of different types of like docs that they need to go through and pull out some of the key like form information from these things. And so almost every company has examples of these kinds of data, sometimes image data, like a digital asset type of like a lot of photos, or a lot of videos that they needed to, to categorize and, and understand. And AI can help you with all of these, be able to like add structure to them, which then allows you to do things like incorporate them into a workflow process. Mm -hmm. Or even just the idea of like just querying them to be able to find what you're looking for is is historically been a problem that there wasn't a great solution to until you're able to add this as structured data. So that all sounds great. And it sounds like AI is helping kind of get past a lot of that manual work. Um, it's saving a lot of time. So productivity increases. But with enterprises, there is always this factor of nuance, right? Even the real estate example that you took, yeah. you know, leases can vary yeah. between cities, between states, yeah. and for companies that operate on a global level, yeah. between nations too. Yeah. So you were talking about having to train ML models on these structured yeah. things on what to extract. Are we talking about the same thing with AI all over again? Well, the good news is, is that um, you typically don't need to train new models. Instead, you just use the power of the intelligence of these models to just tell them what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you um, said, uh, I want to identify the location of this file, like it, you, you want it, it told you what location it's in, but you want it in a specific format. But um, like maybe you didn't want it in just like city, state in the U.S., but like city, state and the country. Mm -hmm. You can basically just maybe ask neighborhood the neighborhood or yeah. whatever nuance. Yeah. And, and, and if the doc, if the information is in the document, um, it can usually pull it out and it can deduce things itself because it's quite intelligent. So you could just say it like tell it to add on to the end of um, of the, the city's uh, and state add on the country. And. If, if a person could do it, then oftentimes AI, and actually AI can often do these kinds of things well. It'll, it would know that city and state, uh, like which country it would be in or which um, province or, or different areas. So it can it can help you in, in enhance the data in many cases too. Mm -hmm. So then that's great. So let's say using this real estate example, we've extracted all of this great data. It's in a wonderfully formatted table. Awesome. What should we do with it? 
well, if this was one of the most critical assets you have in your enterprise, which sometimes we're talking about, then you have a ton of things that you're interested to do for it. Not only are you looking to query the data um, so you can go through and be like, which of these these uh, leases are that have these provisions are expiring on the state? You can also set up workflows to like review on certain timeframes. And, and most of this is triggered off of this structured data that would tell you like important dates, important terms, important uh, clauses. And then those are the kind of things that then uh, let you query, sort, filter, search, in addition to um, get notifications, run workflows, even to be able to automate some of the processes that before were manual and started with somebody reading through all of the data to then figure out what to do next. Mm. So before, instead of doing it manually or having very static, hard-coded processes, AI allows us to be a lot more dynamic because content can also change and new forms of content are always created. Um, so enterprises tuning in today and we're here talking about uh, Extract, what would be the TLDR for them? In TLDR is that if you have important business unstructured data in whatever form it is, and you've always wanted, or you now that you're thinking about it, you want to pull out structured data, then you can almost certainly do it today with companies like Box. Great. Thanks, Ben. It's so important to hear why AI-powered data extraction is important for enterprises of today. That wraps up this episode all about data extraction. Tune in next time for more on AI topics for the enterprise.